Hello and welcome to another Beehive 101. In this video, we're going to cover theme setup. Setting up your publications theme is one of the central aspects of getting your newsletter set up so that you can start sending. What I mean by theme is going to be the look and feel of the design of your newsletter, the colors, the fonts, the spacing between different uh, elements like text and images. It's going to be more or less the branding of your newsletter that is going to make an impression on the reader when they open it in the inbox. Now, this video is split into three different parts. The first is an introduction to the way that Beehive does our theming, which is a little bit different than some other platforms. The second is going to be setting up your web publication specific themes or theme settings, which are you know look and feel in terms of color and some of the font choices. The third part is going to be diving into our design lab where we can set with really granular detail the design aspects of everything else, fonts, headers, images, links, everything else. To understand why theme setup is so important to your newsletter, you have to understand the approach that Beehive takes and why we take that approach. With many platforms, when you set up an email, you're doing the composition, meaning adding the text and images and buttons and links and such, at the same time as when you do your design work, which is spacing between the background and the content area, or the size of the photos, or the sizes of the font, or the font family, or the font color. When you do those both in one place, a couple things happen. You can have inconsistency creep in, you know, maybe different padding in different places, different font sizes in different places, or just that inconsistency, if it makes it through to the user, looks unprofessional and degrades trust. The second thing is that it just takes time and headspace to manage all of those settings and make sure that they're correct. With those two things in mind, what we've done is we've actually more or less bifurcated the process of writing and composition through the editor and the actual implementation of the design of the newsletter. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. If we jump into write under posts and we look at this new post that I drafted, what we can see in here is the content in terms of a header and a bunch of lorem ipsum text. If we were to add an image, I can add an image here and we'll select an image, we'll upload. one of these placeholders. I'm gonna forgo adding the alt text and stuff like that, but you can see you could just add an image. But within the editor, there's no styling to any of these different elements. If we go into preview, you'll start to see that there is some styling that's got been added. You can see this background color. You can see this font is a slightly different font. You can see not too much about the image because we haven't changed any of those settings yet, but the footer has some color to it. There is a footer. There's no footer in the normal editor experience, but you can see that we've done some marriage between the content and the actual design, and we haven't had to touch a single thing. This results in tons of save time. If you send weekly, daily, it's gonna make your life really a whole lot easier because leading to the second part, what we do is we actually take the design aspect, you set it up once, generally when you set up your newsletter, and then over time, all you're gonna be doing is making potentially small little tweaks to it. You're not gonna actually be making uh, you know, huge design changes every single time you send. So to get set up, I actually navigated to the settings and then to the website section. This is where we can set global variables for the different colors we're gonna use in our publication. I recommend starting here because we have this handy sync now button, which will bring those color changes into the ed editor itself for the design lab. So I like to use, if you don't already have this, I, I find that color.adobe.com works really nicely. It has this tool where you can play with different colors if you have one color in mind and you wanna find complementary colors or just a range, that's a great start. And then I find that you know, something like font pair where you can look and see what different pairings of fonts work well together is really nice for coming up with basically the font pairs that will work for your headers and your body text. From here, I have added three colors. I hit the sync now button. We're just gonna stick with the default layout for our publication because we're not gonna be publishing anything in this video. And for themes, you can also set the background of your subscriber landing page and then the background of your actual content pages. We'll show you what that looks like in a minute, but for this, I chose to set the background to the secondary color, and we're just gonna use the light theme, which is gonna be a white for content pages. We have these options for header font, body font, and button font. Now, these are specific to the actual web side because web browsers can visualize any font. On the email side, email service providers only 
will support a limited number of fonts. So when you get into the theme lab or the design lab, you'll see that the options are limited. For the web side of things, if you go in here and you paste in a name of a Google font, we do all the rest and we'll pull those fonts into the web publication. Lastly, you can go through here and you can select the shape or outline of your buttons on your website, round, square, or circular buttons. We're gonna keep round. So with just these changes that we've made, if we view the site, this is what it's going to look like. You can see we have those rounded corners. We have the primary color as the button color. We have the Montserrat font as the subscribe button and the, the header here. If we had a description for this publication, the publication description would show up here up underneath with the body font. And then that secondary color that we set as the background is showing up here. Jumping into the design lab, we see a bunch of different options for different aspects of the theme. You'll also see we have placeholders that show you in real time what your theme is gonna look like. So I've actually already been in here and I've made some changes, but we're gonna walk through and I will show you how to make some updates that will make the design process a little easier. This first menu is gonna be involved with the background color. There's some other things in here like the spacing and, and the curve of the edges. We can make it white, let's say if we just wanted to make it a plain white. Post border is going to be that outline that we just saw, and spacing is going to be the side and the top spacing. Moving to body text, I've already changed this to open sans. We've added extra line spacing. We've changed some font colors. I'm actually going to change the font color here to our black. and I'm not going to make it bold, just so that the links are represented by just these little accents. I like the understated look there. For header text, this is going to dictate the font headers for here, these H1 through H6. I've only updated H1 through H3 because H2 and H3 are used by some of the elements in our widgets. The referral program is going to pull from H2. Our polls feature is going to pull from H3, so it's important to have at least those set. If we go to email header. This is where the top portion is going to be modified. So I've changed the top header or headline font as well as the subtitle and if we get down here we can also set a image I'm just gonna do a placeholder but essentially this logo this is where your header would go with your logo if your newsletter begins with something like that this is only going to show up on the email version it's not going to show up on the web version sometimes users will add in like an image as a header at the top of their newsletter but of course on the web version that wouldn't look very good if you set that header in the theme you can be sure that it's going to disappear when it gets published to the web as well. So you can add a link there and modify some of the settings around where the date shows up. If we close this menu up, we move to email footer. I'm going to actually make this background here white. The icon color is, we're going to make dark, which is already dark. Font color is going to stay the same, and we're going to make this white so that this footer kind of matches the rest of the email. You can see those changes happen in real time. Moving next to the buttons, we're going to make the font color for the buttons white. I like that a little bit more than the dark, but other than that, you can change some of the spacing, curve radius of the button, if there's a border, and so forth. Content breaks are these little uh, accents here. I actually want to make that this little yellow, off-white. I like that a little bit more. I like mine to basically span the entire width. I like the way that it breaks things up. You can play with that. Images are going to be here. So you can see that we've changed the font of this little caption. You can do whatever you want with that. You can make the caption italic, not italic, etc. Lists are going to be here. You can modify the way that they're represented. So you can do disks, which are the circles. You can do squares. You can do hollow circles. You can also change the number styling from ones to upper Roman numerals, so like I, 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 etc. Keep that decimal. We move to block quotes. So this block quote section is going to be where we can add quotes from headlines from the, the story and whatnot, but I, I don't like that yellow. I'm going to make that red. So we do that. We'll make the font color also white. Really grabs your attention, jumps at you. Moving to embeds, that's going to be the section down here. So you can decide whether you want to hide the URL. Maybe we keep the description, unhide the title. We've changed the font here to match our font from the rest of the newsletter, but you can start to see how all of this comes together. There are a ton of settings here. And the main point is that our newsletters are pretty much infinitely customizable and really are very robust in, in how you can replicate an existing theme 
and port it over to Beehive. At the same time, we also provide a ton of tools that you can come up with your kind of a new theme if you're coming from a platform that doesn't allow a lot of customization. All in all, what this does is you know, now we have the theme that every time you go and you create your newsletter, it's going to have a lot of that initial look and feel built in. If we go back to that initial post that we wrote and we go into here, we're going to make some changes. I'm going to make I'm going to add a title. We're going to make it say, hello world. We're going to show the title and the subtitle is going to be, this is a test post. This is going to be my me. I'm going to keep that. I'm going to add, actually show the byline in the email so you can see what that looks like. What else can we do? We can add a link here. We're going to go deeper into the actual editor experience in a later video, but just to show you what one of those links look like, we'll add a button right here at the top. Say like, click me, and this will be www. Cool. So we're just with these quick small changes, if we go in here, we can see in the preview that we've have this very uniform kind of consistent look when we come to our headers. Our body text looks very similar. Some of those didn't come through. Let's see why did this not come through? Do we need to give it a second? Yeah, there we go. Now it's here. So we have this link that's got the underline. We have the click me button here and we have this image still down at the bottom. Now, what I was referring to with the header, if this was like a header logo type sec type deal, if I go to the web version, we can also see what it's gonna look like when it shows up on the website. So we modify things just a little bit, but it's gonna have the same look and feel in terms of the font buttons. It's not gonna have that header. And we can also look what it, see what it looks like on mobile as well. You can see totally mobile responsive. So. I hope now you can see and understand how the theme settings work and how important they are to giving that brand look and feel to your newsletter. If you have any questions, we're happy to answer them in the comments. Thank you so much for your time watching this. We can't wait to see what you build. Have a great day.